it's been a very quiet morning for tanking. No issues that the team is working. Weather is set at currently at 70% chance of having good conditions at liftoff time. The vehicle assembly building. So that's where the shuttle gets put together. And then it rolls out a couple of miles out to the, where the shuttle pad is. The beanie cap essentially. Shuttle Atlantis is on there, waiting to take off. The final inspection team and close that crew have entered the pad. Copy that. Final inspection team is complete and we'll be rolling back to AB11. You got everything? Uh, inspection is complete. I'll depart the pad. I copy depart the pad and just heads up Tom. Uh, flight crew has been in the process of departing the ONC at this time. You guys might make it out without having to pull over, but I'll need you to be advised uh, that they are in, in route to the pad. And here comes our STS-132 Atlantis crew. So with that, the Astrovan now will proceed on out to Pad 39A. And there they go. And they'll be escorted out to the pad by has a security van as is customary behind them. The well, inspection team is on the way back from the pad and their vehicles. I think the two will pass, but it'll be close. The landing aids at the shuttle landing facility are about to be activated should a return to the landing site be necessary this afternoon. The Astro Van now arriving at the pad and going up the incline ramp to the pad surface. The crew compartment reports that they are ready for the astronauts ingress. Crew may pause for a moment to take a look at Atlantis before they head up the elevator. And that's exactly what they're doing. That uh, shot there looking up the side of the flame trench to the crew on the pad surface. And we're at uh, T minus three hours and holding with an hour, two minutes, 50 seconds remaining in this built in hold. Here are the astronauts now getting off the elevator, ready to cross the orbiter access arm. And 
and our commander, Ken Ham, being assisted with his launch and entry suit prior to boarding Atlantis to be our first crew member aboard today. Here we see our commander being seated in the cockpit and mission specialist number three Steve Bowen being assisted with his launch and entry suit. Steve Bowen now confirmed to be aboard Atlantis at this time. Tony Antonelli, our pilot, will be boarding next. Here's Sellers, is mission specialist number four, ready for his entry into the crew compartment. Next to board, he's mission specialist number one aboard Atlantis on STS-132. Yeah, so uh, we're three hours from launch, uh, just a little under, and so uh, some of these guys have already been sitting on their back for, for a little while. I guess when you can't turn your head, can't move around, a mirror's not a bad thing to have. And uh, Mike Good, you'll hear called Bueno on the loops during the mission. That crew has actually been working with these guys all through training. They're assigned uh, kind of to the crew when the crew's assigned, and they show up at the, all the training events where they're suited and kind of go through the whole choreography every single time, make sure the suits are fit, fitting just right. Mike Good coming into view uh, in the MS2 seat, and uh, Chris Cassidy will start working on him here shortly. Yeah, so with the exception of the uh, commander and pilot and MS2, most of the guys are up and moving around very, very quickly. And uh, actually, the guys down in the mid deck will be getting out of their ACES uh, pretty quickly after getting an eight and a half minute ride to orbit. You can see the hatch there with Atlantis written down the side. Minus two minutes and counting. Atlantis, close and lock your visors and initiate O2. OTC, that is in work. Ground on sequencer will hand off to Atlantis's onboard flight computer 15 seconds from now. Chain is armed, sound suppression water system activated. T minus 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. Go for main engine start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.
the point at which the twin solid rocket boosters burn out and separate from the orbiter.
operation confirmed. Onboard guidance system has done its job of settling out any of the dispersions that have been introduced at the booster separation. traveling 3,700 miles per hour at an altitude of 47 miles. There it goes, huh? Yeah. You see it right? The booster that came off? Oh, yeah. This view from a camera on the external tank looking down the length of the orbiter. You can still see that little dot there. Wild. You can still, if you know where to look, you can still see that dot going. Atlantis, you are single engine, opt three. Copy, single engine, opt three. And that roll to heads up provides a good uh, satellite communications link with Atlantis, uh, continuing its uh, travel into space. You are pressed to Miko and single engine Zaragoza 104. Copy, pressed to Miko, single engine Zaragoza 104. Scorch, I got the roll. Lucky dog. Atlanta's copies. Nominal shutdown. Go for the plus X. Go for the pitch. Still going. Atlantis is now traveling. 13,000 miles per hour, 580 miles away from the Kennedy Space Center at an altitude of 340,000 feet. Atlantis can reach orbit on one engine now should two fail. However, all three are still in good shape. Atlantis is traveling 15,500 miles per hour, approaching eight minutes into the flight, downrange 740 miles at an altitude of 64 miles. Burning out, Nico. Main engine cutoff confirmed, standing by for separation uh, from the external fuel tank. Atlantis now uh, flying away from the external tank after separation. Plus X uh, burn maneuver are being performed by Commander Ken Ham. Uh, nominal Miko, Ohms 1, not required. Preliminary Ohms 2 TIG will be 37 colon 30. Look at that. That is awesome. Now welcome back to space for you and your veteran crew. Copy, 3730, it's good to be back to as you know. And uh, almost one is not required. As is typical with all space shuttle missions, the crew uh, rapidly gets out their handheld camera and takes some still and uh, motion video of the external tank as it drifts away from the shuttle. This gives the ground teams an idea of uh, exactly how the foam on the external tank fared to uh, make sure that all of it stayed uh, in its proper position.
you can see some uh, some of the cryogenics from inside that tank uh, still venting as uh, the tank separated from Space Shuttle Atlantis. That tank also has uh, what are known as tumble jets installed on it that uh, enable the tank to basically flip end over end to ensure that it actually breaks up as expected as it goes back down into the Earth's atmosphere, it disintegrates. And uh, wow, what a ride. I was really digging, like, no master cautions. That was a cool thing. Yeah, that was good. Not a one. Yeah. Nothing. And we appreciate all the folks working the ball bearings down in uh, MCC and LCC to get us off the uh, pad.